So thank you very much, dear devotees, for reading this translation. And we are great, grateful to you to fill this gap. And now the Samarinda Prabhu is here. We request him to please begin today's Kata. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Ramana Prabhu. To make him co-host, Prabhu. Yeah, just... Om Ajnana Timirandha Se Jnana Anjana Shalake Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Hiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunnivadi Paschati Deshatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasati Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Thank you all for kindly participating and reading so nicely. Maybe devotees can take turn and read the, uh, the Sanskrit verses from tomorrow. We can have devotees read. Uh, you can kindly practice and come so that we can save time. Uh, and then you can read uh, five, five, six, six verses. Hmm? So today I will like to read all the verses. We can start with Sri Shukha Uvacha, Canto 10, Chapter 6. Nandaha Pativa Cheshaurer Nam Risheti Vichintayan Harim Jagama Sharanam Utpata Gama Shankitaha Kamsena Prahita Gora Putana Balaghatini Shishum Chachara Nignanti Pura Gram of Rajadishu Nayatra Shravanadini Rakshognani Swakarmasu Kurvanti Satva Tamhartur Yatudhanya Chetatrahi Sakechari Ekadot Patia Putana Nanda Gokulam Yoshitwa Maya Yatmanam Pravishat Kama Charini Tankesha Bandha Vyati Shakta Mallikam Brihan Nitambas Tanakritramadhyamam Suvasa Samkal Pitakarana Bhushana Twishola Satkuntala Manditana Nam Valgusmita Panga Visarga Vikshita Irmano Harantim Vanitam Rajokasam Amam Satambho Jakarena Rupinim Gopya Shriam Drashtumi Vagatam Patim Bala Grahastatra Vichin Vatishishun Yadrichayananda Grihe Sadantakam Balam Pratichan Nanijoru Teja Samda Shatal Pek Nimiva Hitam Hasi Vibudyatam Bala Kamarika Graham Chara Charatma Sanimi Litek Shanaha Anantam Aro Payadankamantakam Yatu Rukam Saptamu Buddhira Judihi Tam Tikshna Chitta Mativama Cheshitam Vikshantara Koshapari Chadasibad Varastriam Tat Prabhaya Chadharishite Nirik Shemane Janani Yatishtatam Tasminstanam Dur Jaraviriam Ulbanam Goranka Madaya Shishor Dadhavat her Gardam Karabyam, Hagavan prepared Dietat Prane, Samam Rosh, Saman Vito Pibat, Samun Chamunchal, Amiti Prabhashani, Nishpid Yamana, Kilajiva Marmani, Vivritane Tre Charano, Bujo Muhu, Aswin Nagatra, Kripati, Rurodaha, Tasyaswane Nati Gabir Ramhasa, Sadri Mahid Yoshachal as a graha, Rasadi Shasta, Pratine, the Rejana Petu, Kritova, Jernipata Shankaya. Nishacharitam Vetitastana Vyasur Vyada Yakesham Sharano Bujavapi Prasarya Goshte Nijarupa Mastita Vajrahato Vritra Iva Patandripa Patamano Pita Dehas Triga Vyutyantara Druman Churnayama Sarajendra Mahadasi Tadad Bhutam Isha Matrogradam Strasim Girikandar and Asikam Gandashailastanam Raudram Prakirnaruna Murdajam Andakupa Gaviraksham Purinaro Habishanam Badhase to Bujavangrim Shunyato Yerdodaram Santa Trasusmata Diksha Gopa Gopikalevaram Purvam Tutan Niswanita Binarit Karnamastaka Balam Chatasya Urasi Kridantam Makuto Bayam Gopias Turnam Sama Betia Jagrahuja to Sambrama Yashoda Rohini Bhyamta Samambala Sisar Vataha Raksham Bida Dire Samya Gopucha Brahmana Divi Gomutrena Snapayitva Punargora Jasarak Bakam Raksham Chakrusta Shakrita Dwadashangeshu Namabi Gopya Samsrishta Salila Angeshu Karayo Pratak Nyasyat Mani Athabala Sibija Nyasamakurvata Avyada Jongri Mani Mams Tabajan Vatoru Yet Nyotchuta Katita Tanjataram Hayasya Ritkesha was Twadura Isha Inastukantam Vishnur Bujam Mukamuru Krama Ishwarakam Chakra Grata Sagado Haridas Tupaschat Wat Parshwa Yor Danurasi Maduhajanascha Kone Shushanka Urugaya Upar Yupendra Stark Shakshita Haladara Purusha Samantad Indriani Rishikesha Prana Nara Yanovatu Shweta Dvipapatish Chittam Mano Yogeshwarovatu Prishni Garbas to Te Buddhi Matmanam Bhagavan Paraha Kridantam Patu Govinda Shayanam Patu Madhava Vrajantam of Yadvaikunta Asinam Tuam Shriapatihi Bunjanam Yadnipu Patu Sarva Grahabhayankaraha 
ಡಾಕಿನ್ಯ ಯಾತು ಧಾನ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕುಷ್ಮಾಂಡಾಯರ್ ಬಕ ಗ್ರಹ ಭೂತ ಪ್ರೇತ್ ಪೇತ ಪ್ರಶಾಶಾಶ್ಚ ಯಕ್ಷರಕ್ಷೋ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಕೋಟರ ರೇವತಿ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠ ಪೂತನ ಮಾತೃಕಾದಯ ಉನ್ಮಾದಾಯ ಯಪಸ್ಮಾರ ದೇಹ ಪ್ರಾಣೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಧ್ರುವ ಸ್ವಪ್ನ ದೃಷ್ಟಾಮ ಹೋತ್ಪಾತ ವೃದ್ಧ ಬಾಲ ಗ್ರಹಶ್ಚಯೇ ಸರ್ವೇ ನಶ್ಯಂತು ತೇ ವಿಷ್ಣು ನಾಮ ಗ್ರಹಣ ಭೀರವ ಶ್ರೀಶುಖ ಉವಾಚ ಇತಿ ಪ್ರಣಯಬದ್ಧಾಭಿ ಗೋಪಿಭೀಕೃತ ರಕ್ಷಣ ಪಾಯಯಿತ್ವಾಸ್ತನ ಮಾತಾ ಸಂಯವೇಶಯದಾತ್ಮಜ ತಾವನ್ನಂದಾದ ಯೋಗೋಪ ಮಥುರಾಯ ವ್ರಜಂ ಗತಾ ವಿಲೋಕ್ಯ ಪೂತನ ದೇಹಂ ಬಭೂ ಅತಿವಿಸ್ಮಿತ ನೂನ ಬತರ್ಷಿ ಸಂಜಾತ ಯೋಗೇಶೋ ವಾ ಸಮಸ ಸಹ ಸ ಎವ ದೃಷ್ಟೋ ಯುತ್ಪಾತ ಯದಾಹನಕ ಧುಂದು ಕಲೇವರಂ ಪರಶುಭಿಶ್ಚಿತ್ವಾ ತತ್ತೆ ವ್ರಜೌಕಸಃ ದೂರೆ ಕ್ಷಿತ್ವಾ ವಯವಶೋ ನ್ಯದಹಂಕಾಷ್ಟ ವೇಷ್ಟಿ ದಹ್ಯ ಮಾನಸ ದೇಹಸ್ಯ ಧೂಮಶ್ಚಾಗುರು ಸೌರಭ ಉತ್ಥಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಿರ್ಭುಕ್ತ ಸಪದ್ಯಾಗತ ಪಾಪ್ಮನ ಪೂತನಾ ಲೋಕ ಬಾಲಗ್ನಿ ರಾಕ್ಷಸೀರುಧಿ ರಾಶನ ಜಿಗಾಂಸಯಾಪಿ ಹರೆಯೇ ಸ್ತನ ದತ್ವಾಪಸದ್ಗತಿ ಕಿಂ ಪುನಃ ಶ್ರದ್ಧೆಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ಯಚ್ಛನ್ ಪ್ರಿಯತಮಂ ಕಿಂ ನು ರಕ್ತಾಸ್ತನ್ಮಾಥರೋ ಯಥ ಪದ್ಭ್ಯಾಂ ಭಕ್ತರಿಧಿ ಸ್ಥಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ವಂದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಲೋಕವಂದಿತೈ ಅಂಗಂ ಯಸ ಸಮಕ್ರಮ್ಯ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಅಪಿ ತತ್ಸ್ತನ ಯಾತು ಧನ್ಯಪಿ ಸಾ ಸ್ವರ್ಗಂ ಅವಾಪ ಜನನೀ ಗತಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಭುಕ್ತಸ್ತನ ಕ್ಷೀರ ಕಿಮು ಗಾವೋ ನು ಮಾತರ ಪಯಾಂಸಿ ಯಾಸಾಮಿ ಬದ್ ಪುತ್ರ ಸ್ನೇಹಸ್ನುತಾತ್ಯಲ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದೇವಕೀ ಪುತ್ರ ಕೈವಲ್ಯಾದಖಿಲ ಪ್ರದ ತಾಸಾಮವಿರತ ಕೃಷ್ಣೆ ಕುರುವತೀನಾಂ ಸುತೆ ಕ್ಷಣ ನ ಪುನಃ ಕಲ್ಪತೆ ರಾಜನ್ ಸಂಸಾರೋ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸಂಭವ ಕಟಧೂಮ ಸೆ ಸೌರಭ್ಯಂ ಅವಗ್ರಾಹಿ ವ್ರಜೌಕಸ ಕಿಮಿದ ಕುತ ಏವೇತಿ ವದಂತೋ ವ್ರಜ ಮಾಯೂ ತೇ ತತ್ರ ವರ್ಣಿತ ಗೋಪೈ ಪೂತನಾಗಮನಾಧಿ ಶ್ರುತ್ವ ತನ್ನಿಧನ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಶಿಶೋಶ್ಚಾಸನ್ ಸುವಿಸ್ಮಿ ನಂದಸ್ವಪುತ್ರ ಮಾದಾ ಪ್ರೇತ್ಯಾಗತ ಮುದಾರಧೀ ಮೂರ್ಧ್ನಿ ಉಪಾಗ್ರಾಹ್ಯ ಪರಮ ಮುದಂ ಲೇವೇ ಕುರುದ್ವ ಯೇತಕೂತನ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಯಾರ್ಭಕಮದ್ಭುತ ಶುನಿಯಾ ಶ್ರದ್ಧೆಯ ಮರ್ತ್ಯೋ ಗೋವಿಂದೇ ಲಭತೆ ರತಿ ಗುರವೇ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾ ತದಾಲಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತಾಯ ತದ್ ಭಕ್ತಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ thank you for kindly joining in today will be the part 2 for um text 33 and 34 that we read day before yesterday uh where the context was the body of putana was being burnt by the brijbasis repeatedly cut into smaller pieces by axes thrown in different places in um the the cremation place and uh, set on wood in the pyre um and set ablaze repeatedly we discussed that day before yesterday because anything that's poisonous shila prabhupada explains from shila vishnu chakravarti thakur's comment that um such animals like the snakes and the scorpions are repeatedly burned so that they don't come back to life and putana being the abode of all uh, poison internal poison and external poison um she was being given the last rites by the brajabasis isn't that amazing that somebody who lived all her life with kamsa would have ended up dying in mathura or maybe somewhere else and may have not even received last rites generally you see that uh, rakshasas don't receive last rites they are just uh, put to die um <laughs> either dead on a battlefield um killed by someone destroyed by uh, the exorcists who are ghost catchers Uh, or they're just eaten up by jackals and hyenas and vultures but you can see even ravana was given last rites by the mercy of shri ramachandra and similarly here putana is receiving last rites by the hands of the brajbasis what we practice all our life is what we will receive at the time of death uh, but putana received something that she never practiced this is called mercy this is called mercy when we don't desire or deserve something and krishna still gives it to us this is mercy we can see krishna works on justice ye yatha mam prapadhyante tam stataiva bhajamya ham mama vartmanu vartante manusha partha sarvasha krishna says in the bhagavad gita as you approach me i will reciprocate so if you remember me then i will take you back home back to godhead but yam yam vapi smaran bhavam you remember something else then i will give you that body whatever you remember at the time of death is what i think is very dear to your heart therefore you are remembering it at 
And therefore, I will make you that. You think of a dog, then I'll make you a dog. You think of a woman, I'll make you a woman. You think of a rat, you become a rat. Um, Krishna said, at the time of death, where the body is going through so much pain, at that time, if you're thinking of something, imagine how dear that thing is to you. So no problem, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and Krishna gives it next life. But if you remember Krishna, uh, Krishna generally works on justice. What we practice, how we approach, is how he reciprocates. But in case of Putana, it is seen sheer mercy. There's no justice. <laughs> There's absolutely no justice. She is leaving her body in Brindavan thinking of Krishna. Krishna is the last person she has darshan of. Like Wali. Wali didn't deserve or desire, but the last person he had darshan was or Sri Ramachandra. Wali died in the arms of Sri Ram with the arrow of Sri Ram going through his chest. How did that happen? <laughs> he didn't desire or deserve it. But this is the mercy net of the Supreme Lord. Just like you see painters and they're painting a long building, a tall building or they are working on some construction, they'll have a safety net. So in case, accidentally, if they slip, there's a net which protects them and saves their life. So Krishna works in both ways. He pulls us up. At the same time, if we slip, he has a mercy net protecting us. So in this case of Putana, Krishna did both. He was pulling Putana towards himself. And yet at the same time, she didn't desire or deserve. He also had a safety net for her of Karuna, of Kripa. Of mercy. Therefore, Krishna is called as an ocean of mercy. Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindho, Deena Bandho Jagatpate. Oh Krishna, oh ocean of mercy, oh friend of the poor, oh uplifter of the fallen, Patita Pavan, please have some mercy on me. Therefore, we can see our Acharyas have prayed like this that I am most abominable. I don't desire or deserve upliftment, but my Lord, I trust. Your mercy. You're an ocean of mercy. Ocean means unending. Par apar gabhir shunya. It doesn't have a bed. Um, it seems like this doesn't have a bed because you, the more you swim down, down, underwater, deeper, it seems like there's a whole new world underwater. But where is the base? <laughs> it's easier to find the base of a swimming pool, but not the base of an ocean. And from one end to another end, you can't swim across. And that's just oceans of this world. Imagine the ocean of Krishna's compassion. In Sindhu. Sindhu. And then if Krishna is so kind, imagine how kind Srimati Radharani is. Vaidhak the Sindhu Anurag Rasaika Sindhu Vatsalya Sindhu Atisandra Kripaika Sindhu Lavanya Sindhu Amrita Chavi Rupa Sindhu Sri Radhika Spuratume Ridhi Keli Sindhu Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati has said, Oh Radharani, should I call you as the ocean of skill? Or should I call you the ocean of Krishna Prem? Or should I call you the ocean of compassion for all of us? Or should I call you the ocean of beauty? <laughs> From the ocean of milk came, uh, the churning of the milk ocean came Mohini Murti. But from the churning of the milk ocean of Kirtida Devi's womb came Madana Mohana Mohini. <laughs> the Mohini who can attract even Mohini. <laughs> that is Srimati Radharani. Very kind, very merciful. Very merciful. There are stories of Radharani having mercy on Kamsa. Kamsa comes to Brindavan and he becomes a gopi. <laughs> By the mercy of Srimati Radharani. Radharani said, if you come here again, then I will make you a gopi permanently. And you will be in one, one of my camps. And Kamsa runs away. <laughs> Ashwatthama, who had no mercy from anyone for what he had done. He shot a Brahmastra at the womb of Uttara to kill Parikshit. He had slaughtered the five sleeping sons of Draupadi. He shot a Brahmastra in the air to counteract which Arjuna took shelter of Krishna. What to do now? I can shoot a Brahmastra, but it will destroy the world. <laughs> this was Ashwatthama as the son of Drona. Nobody had mercy on him, but it is described that Ashwatthama came to Barsana and did bhajan to 
be free from his sin. And Srimati Radharani uplifted even him. So our divine couple Radha and Krishna are so kind. Very, very kind. There's a story in Radha Kund that there was a very famous, it's a very famous story. It's a place called a Shivukhari where a jackal got stuck in a pit. You may have heard the story that a female jackal was chased by the Brijbasi kids and uh, the kids were having fun. <laughs> they were throwing sticks and stones at, you know how you find generally naughty kids on the street. Um, <laughs> but they, I think they were too naughty. So they started throwing sticks and stones at this uh, CR. CR means jackal, right? Female jackal, yeah. And the female jackal started running for help and finally got stuck into a pit. Now what the children did was abominable, beyond reasoning. They set the pit on fire so that the jackal suffers. And the jackal was howling and screaming and crying for help. And Radharani in Radha Kund asked, who is that person crying so loudly in my, in my kund, in my bathing place? So Lalita Sakhi, please go and see. And Lalita Sakhi saw that it was a female jackal. She came and told Radharani that a female jackal is crying for help. Radharani said, anyone, anywhere in and around Radha Kund cries even for material reasons, I will come and uplift them because it is my home. If somebody cries in their own home, we may not have mercy. But if you come to somebody else's home and you start crying loudly, the owner of the house is going to leave everything and come and ask you why you're crying. And what to speak if the owner is as kind and as compassionate as our uh, Srimati Radharani. She immediately gave up her pastimes and came and um, <laughs> held this female jackal and said, why are you crying? Who set you on this pit with fire? The jackal was saved from that pit. Radharani extinguished the fire, pulled the jackal out. And the jackal, female jackal was completely in pain. Radharani embraced the female jackal and said, may you become a gopi and assist me in my pastimes. And that jackal who went into the pit as a jackal came out as a gopi. <laughs> Jackal Gopi. <laughs> Jackal Yeh Gopi. <laughs> so, <laughs> that place where such auspiciousness was seen is called Shiva Khori, Even now in Radha Kund. So if Radharani can have mercy on animals like the jackal, what to speak of human beings who are doing bhajan. It is described that Radharani has a, a female uh, pet calf called as Tungi whom Radharani takes care of in pats and embraces and caresses with so much love. One day Radharani was <clears throat> moving with Tungi and one of Krishna's calves was stuck uh, with pain. Why? Because that it's described the little calf of Krishna was uh, learning to eat grass, <laughs> new calf. And as a result of being stuck, whether to chew the grass or whether to sniff the fragrance of the grass, the baby calf smells so intensely that the blade of grass went into the nostril and started bleeding the nostril. So the calf didn't know, it started crying. So Radharani took that calf on her lap and very kindly, very slowly pulled that blade, sharp blade of grass off the nostril of the calf. And with first aid, medicinal hopes, found at Govardhan, she um, helped the calf back to, nursed it back to health. And the calf just slept off in the lap of Radharani with so much comfort that the calf received. So this is Radharani's heart. Very, very soft. Very soft. Actually, in Vrindavan, there is a very famous story um, of a Muslim by the name Gulab. His name was Gulab and he was a Muslim singer. He would sing at the Shriji Mandir. Uh, he was Muslim by, 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 by religion, by his birth, but by profession, he was a classical singer. So in Barsana at the Shriji temple, his service was to just sing for Shriji and he would get money um, as salary and he would get prasad every day. <laughs> so it was a profession where he would come for a few hours every day and sing different songs, glorifying Radharani. Although his religion was different, he did this as a profession. It so happened that um, 
you know, right from childhood, that was his profession at Sri Ji Temple. He would sing, 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 sing for hours every day, for years. Then he grew up. Then he was of marriageable age. He got married to some girl in Barsana only. And then he even had a daughter and he was so attached to Sri Ji, to Radharani, that he even named his daughter Radha. <laughs> but he, his profession continued of being a singer at Sri Ji Temple. And he continued to sing, continued to sing. And Radha also would sing with him. And now this little girl, Radha, was of marriageable age. So Gulab was very old. <laughs> it was over 50 years that he was singing for Shiji. Now his daughter was of marriageable age. She got married. Wife, due to some reasons, health reasons, passed away. So Gulab became all by himself. And he still would come and sing. But now, as he would sing, he would miss his wife, he would miss his daughter. So, um, <laughs> it is described <clears throat> as he would do kirtan, he would end up doing more calling out of Radha, thinking of his daughter. <laughs> and one fine day, it so happened that he sat outside the Shiji temple, crying and weeping, calling out Radha, 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 actually remembering his daughter. And it so happened that in exhaustion and fatigue, he fainted. And when he woke up, he had darshan of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> and he said, who are you? You're so beautiful. She said, I am the one whom you have been calling out. So Gulab said, I actually was calling out to my daughter, Radha. So this is like the Radharani version of the Ajamil story. Only that <laughs> he was not Ajamil. He was a very great devotee. He was a very great devotee. Gulab was a very great devotee. He was just calling out Radha, 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 Radha. And Radharani said, yes, you were calling out to your daughter, but actually the name Radha first belongs to me. And then your daughter was named after me. So when you called Radha, 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 I thought you're calling out to me because Baba, you've been singing for me for so many years now. So I thought you're calling out to me. So Gulab was... Uh, crying and weeping and horror pulating and hair was standing on end. He couldn't believe that the personality whom he was singing for had actually come for him. Even his daughter or his wife didn't come, but Radharani for whom he has been singing for 50 years actually appeared before him. And out of shock in joy, it is described that Gulab left this world um, in that joy, in that ecstasy of having darshan of Radharani. And he was given samadhi. Even today, when you go for Brajbandal Parikrama, you can have darshan of Gulab Sakhi ki samadhi. Gulab became a Sakhi of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> this is the mercy factor of Radha and Krishna. This pastime of Putana, especially in this section, gives us this hope that even if someone with evil intention approaches Radha and Krishna, even they, Paramam Gatim, even they get. The supreme destinations and then kimuta shraddhaya grinhan then what can be said of someone who worships radha and krishna uh, with all their heart so we all should have a lot of hope in our in in our life that yes we should not break principles and we should not act unethically and irreligious and materially driven but at the same time we should try our best and depend on krishna krishna is very kind the proof that Radha and Krishna love us is seen in the fact that we received material bodies, human bodies. <laughs> All the material bodies, but human bodies. If we were made into caterpillars or made into butterflies, or made, made into trees or monkeys or even scorpions or snakes, we wouldn't have even realized. We would have been crawling in some corner of the world without having to know that, well, this is not justice. I want to be a human being. We wouldn't have even thought of it. But Radha and Krishna are so kind. Although we didn't desire or deserve, they gave us this human body. Anyone who has a human form should tell themselves that this is a proof that Radharani wants to meet me. Radha and Krishna want to meet us. They desire to meet us. They want us with them. And the proof is they have given us human material bodies these bodies, human birth. And not just that, they have given us the, the sprout of the seed of bhakti in our heart. 
and they have given us association of like-minded devotees where we can cultivate that mood. And they have given us Hari Katha and Hari Kirtan and Sri Guru and a Parampara and books that we can study and deities that we can worship. They have given all this. They have given Bhagavat Prasad. They have given Ekadashi. They have given Tulsi. They have given Kartik Mas. They have given Vrindavan Dham. There is nothing that we can tell Radha and Krishna that because you didn't give me, therefore I couldn't become a devotee. Radha and Krishna ghasit rahe hamko. Literally, they have put their rope, tied us, and they are pulling. So when we are being dragged now, it's not that we are making advancement because of our benefit or our work. They are dragging us out of their love. So the fact that we are all become human beings, this is a proof that Radha and Krishna want us with them. They want to see us. Not that we want to see them. They want to see us. We simply have to reciprocate in this life. We simply have to do little bhajan, little austerity. We have to be sincere. We have to give up anything that is non-devotional and chase this path with full intensity. Enough is enough. Enough of doing things which are giving us suffering in this world. Enough of going astray. Enough of preparing another rebirth. Bas ho gaya, thak gaya hum. Hare Krishna, enough. <laughs> now is the time we go full on, fired up, firing all cylinders towards our goal. Every minute, every day we are marching. Ham honge kamiyab. Man mein hai vishwas. Pura hai vishwas. Ham honge kamiyab ek <laughs> We will go back home back to God, each one of us. You don't have to worry. Radha and Krishna really love us. They love us beyond boundaries. Beyond boundaries. Not us. They love individually us. Each one of us. <laughs> In this world, we can see the boy or the girl gets married to some other caste. And even the parents give up talking to that boy or girl. You've seen even that. Um, they don't talk. They don't maintain relation. We can see brothers don't like each other and they're suing each other in court for the father's property. Uh, sisters not talking to each other. Brother, sister not talking to each other. Children not taking care of the parents. Parents not liking the children. We see how fickle and temporary and fleeting the love in this world is. They're with each other for some time. Even husband, wives, divorce, breakups, whatnot. And on the other hand, look at the ocean of love that we are talking about. Even if we hate God, even if we say there is no God, even if we say I am the best, still Radha and Krishna love us. Their love is unconditional. Irrespective of what we think of them, irrespective of what we desire, they have decided to love us and accept us wholeheartedly. Now imagine what joy we will have in loving those who love us. In this world, if someone speaks little sweetly to us and we like to speak little sweetly to them, there is some joy of satisfaction in the heart that, oh, there is somebody who's always there for me. But that person will also, with the wheel of time, either at death or even beyond, will leave us. But Radha and Krishna are always there with us. This feeling we should have in our heart. Even if I become the biggest rascal in the world, Radha and Krishna will still not give up on me. That security net is there. That safety net is there. And that's on the base. And on the top, they are pulling us <laughs> towards them. <laughs> Till when will you struggle in this world? Come back. Come. I am ready to give your form as a gopa or a gopi in Goloka Vrindavan. Come back. You don't have to become old. You don't have to become diseased. You will not have toothache, headache, stomachache ever. Come back. No more death. Come back to this eternal realm of Vrindavan where every dust particle is a touchstone, where every tree is a wish-fulfilling tree, where every drop of water is Amrit, where every word is a song and every step is a dance and every day is a festival. You don't have to fast anymore. It's just feasting, feasting and feasting. <laughs> where honey is dripping through the trees of Braja, where the birds are chirping the glories of Radha and Krishna. This beautiful realm, our eternal home, Sri Vrindavan Dham. And our eternal Lord of our lives, Radha Sham Sundar. What more do we need? We have everything. We are the richest. We are the best. <laughs> this is the true ego. Because we belong to the best. 
<laughs> we are in the family of the best. We are at the lotus feet. We are captivated, mesmerized, hypnotized. We are charmed, amazed, wonderstruck, astonished at the sweet beauty and the sweet compassion of our divine couple. What else do we need in this world? Imagine a person who has $1 million dug in his backyard, in the garden, and he's going around begging because he doesn't know there's so much money. Once he realizes there is so much money, there's no need to beg anywhere because you're a multimillionaire. Not because you're a multimillionaire, because your father left that money for you. So similarly, we don't have to beg for anything in this world because we have the $1 million of Krishna Prem in our heart that has been given by our Guru Parampara. We simply have to chant and read and hear and never forget Krishna. Why and how will we forget someone who loves us so much? Why should we? This is the root of bhajan. The first step of bhakti is the person whom we are trying to chant about, read about, hear about, and worship. They love us unconditionally. So now chanting means calling out to someone who loves us. Reading means getting to know about that person who wants us. Hearing means knowing about the qualities and the activities of the divine couple and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who love us unconditionally. At the moment, how, how do we do bhajan? How do we chant and how do we perform bhakti? This is my world. This is my home. These are my family members. Krishna is somewhere beyond the clouds and I'm trying to chant about someone who's not connected to me. Then how can we perform bhajan? Then we are chanting names of someone whom we don't belong to, reading and hearing about someone whom we don't care about, whom we can see. But now we have to change our conception. That is my home. Vrindavan is my home. Radha Krishna are my family. They are associates who come down as the Guru Parampara are my well-wishers. This is not my home. These are not my family members. Where there is sambandha, where there is connection, automatically service and love will flow. You can see. If you relate yourself to be an Indian, naturally you will wave the tricolor when India is playing Pakistan. Because you relate yourself to an Indian. But if you relate yourself to being a Pakistani, then you will have that flag. Huh? <laughs> so depending on where we relate ourselves to, automatically love and service and attachment will flow. If we tell ourselves, I belong to Radha and Krishna, I belong to Brindavan. Then naturally, because we belong to Brindavan, I want to read about Brindavan. I want to hear about Brindavan. I want to live in Brindavan. And <laughs> I want to serve Brindavan. I want to serve Radha and Krishna. I want to serve Mahaprabhu because we belong to them. <laughs> and because everyone belongs to them, we serve everybody. <laughs> and we can unconditionally love everyone because they all belong to the divine couple. Vishram Purna Sukhayate Vidi Mahindra Shakitaya. This is the path of joy. This is the path of joy. Bhajan means first sambandha. Understanding that I belong to Radha and Krishna. I don't belong to anybody except the divine couple. I belong to the lotus feet of the most merciful, magnanimous, the most merciful, most beautiful Srimati Radhika. Ah, from whose lotus feet even millions and millions of other goddesses come. I belong to her lotus feet. This should be our nishtha. <laughs> if Putana such a nasty Bala Ghatini. She can be touched by Krishna. And when she's given last rites, the smoke that's coming from her body is giving the scent of Aguru. Dhumascha Aguru Saurabaha. Our Acharya is described. What does this mean? Any touch with Krishna will purify us. All of us. Parasi Jasupada Pankaja Dhuri Tari Ahalya Krita Gabhuri. Goswamiji has written that Ahalya she broke the principle. And Indra, when he tricked Ahalya by coming as Gautam Rishi, you may have heard this story. Ahalya's uh, husband was Gautam Rishi. And when he was away, Indra came as Gautam Rishi because he liked Ahalya. <laughs> Indra always teaches us through his personal example, sometimes how to be and sometimes how not to be also. <laughs> so this is an example of how not to be. Please don't take Indra wrong. He's teaching us. Sri Chaitanya Priya Bhakta Dware Annera Shikshakare Aita Prakare. In the Bhakti Ratnakar, it is described that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uses his servants to teach others how to be and how not to be. So Indra is teaching by personal example how not to be. So 
uh, he came and he embraced Ahalya while being Gautam Rishi. And when this happened, Ahalya did not understand. She was thinking, oh, this is my loving husband. But then by then, Gautam Rishi came and he saw fake Gautam Rishi in his ashram. So he cursed both. He cursed Indra also and he cursed Ahalya also. And he cursed Ahalya to become stone. He said, you're so stone-hearted. In the absence of your husband, you're embracing another man who comes as your husband. She said, I, actually, I didn't realize. So Gautam Rishi said, so that proves that you're a stone. You have no feelings. You don't know the difference between your husband's touch and some other man. You're a stone. May you become a stone. So Ahalya was cursed to become a stone. She said, but, oh, dear husband, I am only chaste to you in my heart. Because of that, please also give me a benediction. Gautam Rishi said, yes, the benediction is you will be touched by the lotus feet of Sri Ram. Imagine if she was Ahalya, she wouldn't have received Ramchandra's lotus feet on her head because of Ekapatni Vrata Ramachandra wouldn't have gone to her. <laughs> but because she became stone, Goswamiji writes, Parasi. Parasi means Parasha. Jasu means Jab. As soon as. Parasi Jasu Padapankaja Dhuri. As soon as the dust from the lotus feet of Sri Ram touched the stone, Tari Ahalya Krita Agabhuri. That Ahalya who had committed so many sins, she became, she went back home back to God. The stone melted and the true form of Ahalya came out. Just by the touch of the lips of Krishna, Putana's sins went away. Just by the touch of the lotus feet of Sri Ram, Ahalya's sins went away. By the touch of the lotus feet of Krishna, Kaliya's poison went away. <laughs> By the touch of the Lord's hand, Dhruva and Prahlad Maharaj could revive their memory and their speaking ability. By the touch of the Lord's feet, Bali Maharaj became glorious. This is the glory of the Lord. Any touch will only purify and uplift. This is how great the Supreme Lord is. Think about the embrace of Krishna. Sudama became rich by the embrace of the Lord. What to speak of embrace and touch by the lotus feet or the hand. Yes, yes. Just by remembering Krishna, one will be free from repeated birth and death. Just by remembrance. Kathanchana smrite yasmin dushkaram sukaram bhavet vismritir viparitam syad shri chaitanyam namamitam. Chaitanya Charitamrit describes, if you forget Krishna, simple things will become difficult because now you depend on your own ability. And when you remember Krishna, even difficult things become very simple. Simple things become difficult by forgetting Krishna. And by remembering Krishna, even difficult things can become simple. My Guru Maharaj gives the example <laughs> that if you drive a car, then you will be stuck in traffic. <laughs> but if you're in an airplane, no traffic. So we, without Krishna remembrance, is like a car. We are stuck in the traffic of this world, one problem after another. But we remembering Krishna, well, that's like airplane mode, airlifted, no, no, no traffic. Krishna will take us wherever, you know, wherever, even places where we don't desire and deserve, Krishna will take us. Krishna will take us. This is the glory of the Lord. Om Pavitra Apavitro Vasarva Vastagato Viva. Yes, Maret Pundari Kaksham Sabai Habyantra Hushuchi. By remembering Krishna, we become purified. By chanting Hare Krishna, while chanting Hare Krishna, we should tell ourselves. With every bead that we are chanting, we should tell ourselves. With every bead that we are chanting, sins are getting destroyed. With every bead that I am chanting, devotion is coming into my heart. Tell yourself this. When you're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare. We should meditate with every bead. My anarthas are dissolved. My sins are getting lost. And humility and tolerance and all good qualities are coming little by little by little into me. Because any touch with Krishna will only purify. And chanting Hare Krishna is the best way to purify ourselves. Best way. So if you constantly chant as much as possible, now see Bhishma Panchak is coming. Last five days of the month of Kartik. Uh, it's, the, it's the cream of the cream of the cream. <laughs> Chaturmas is the cream out of the 12 months. Kartik is even bigger cream. Sale time. 
maximum spiritual advancement. And Bhishma Panchak are the last five days in the month of Kartik, which is the essence of the essence of the essence. It's described even if one month of Kartik, we were not able to perform Brat. Five days of Bhishma Panchak, you perform Brat and Krishna will have mercy. Five days, just give yourself. Take a break from everything that you're doing and just absorb hearing and chanting. Paj din. You can relax other days. Ideally, no. <laughs> just delete the previous sentence that I said. <laughs> Ideally, no relaxing. Till the time we don't get our goal. No looking to the left, no looking to the right. We just march our way. Till the time we don't find Radha and Krishna. We don't want any putravan, dhanavan, loke, dirga, yuru, pachayate, we don't want any material desire. We don't want any sons and daughters. We don't want long life. We don't want wealth. We don't want anything. We just want our goal. We just want our Radha and Krishna back. We just want to attain the spiritual realm in one life. Only then we will pause. Till then we will continue to march. Uh, so five days of Bhishma Panchak. We can absorb in as much chanting as possible. 32 rounds, 48 rounds, 64 rounds, five days. That's it. As much as possible. So by chanting Hare Krishna, we become purified. By serving the Vaishnavas, we become purified. By hearing, reading about Krishna, we become purified. This is the path of perfection. If Putana has hope, if Ratnakar Daku can become Valmiki, Ulat Nam Rat Sab Jag Jana Adi Kavi Bhai Brahma Samana. It is described by chanting the name. Instead of saying Rama, he chanted Mara. And he became Valmiki. <laughs> Narayano nam naro naranam prasiddha chaura kathita prithibhyam aneka janmarjita papa sancharam harati ashesham shruti matrameva. It is described in the Puranas that just by chanting the holy name, all the sins that we have collected over lifetimes will all be taken away. Patakam pataki nara. It is described that the holy name can destroy more sins than the number of sins that we can perform, even in our dreams. Imagine all the sins that we could have performed. All of that is taken away by the chanting of the Holy Name. In fact, I want to show you a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And with that, we will conclude today's session. Uh, this is Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 12, Chapter 12, Text 55. Look at this. Such a sweet verse. Tell me if you're able to see the screen share. Yeah? You're able to see. Okay. Look at this verse. <laughs> 12, 1255. Hmm? Avismrti Krishna Padara Vindayo Krinotya Bhadrani Chashamtanoti Satvasya Shuddhim Paramatma Bhaktim Jnanam Chavidjana Viraga Yuktam Remembrance of Krishna's lotus feet Destroys everything in auspicious. One. Seven benefits are there in this translation. One is everything in auspicious. Vastu dosh, Anna dosh, Chotish Shastra, uh, Rahu, Ketu, Shani, Mangal, Manglik. All doshas are taken away by the chanting of the holy name. This is first. Second, awards the greatest good fortune. Krishna Prem. So you're saved from the lowest and you attain the highest. Two, two benefits. Now the third benefit, it purifies the heart. All anarthas, lust, greed, pride, envy, jealousy, everything will be taken away. Fourth, bestows devotion to the Supreme Lord. One becomes a pure devotee in one lifetime. Five, one will get all knowledge of Shastra in the heart. Looks like a dream, right? All of this happening. And sixth, not just theoretically, enriched with realization, you will be able to see Krishna's hand in everything in life. And seventh, you will be renounced from this material world. No attachment, no material desires, no craving, no hankering. All of this happens just by remembering Krishna's feet. <laughs> Look. A vismritihi. We know the word vismriti means to forget. So a vismritihi. By not forgetting Krishna's Padaravinda Yoho, the two lotus feet, which means by chanting Hare Krishna. By chanting, you can remember. What happens? Abhadrani Krinoti first. Inauspiciousness, inauspiciousness is reduced or destroyed. Second, Sham, 
All good fortune tanoti expands. Third, sattvasya shuddhim, heart becomes cleansed. Fourth, paramatma bhaktim, bhakti for Krishna will rise. Fifth, all gyan of shastra will come in the heart. Even without reading, you will be able to <laughs> decipher what's happening. Sixth, vidnyana, you will be able to experience Krishna in daily life. And viraga yuktam, viraga means vairagya. We will have renunciation just by chanting Hare Krishna. If putana can get uplifted, why won't we get uplifted? Where is the doubt? <laughs> So in this section of 33 and 34, our Acharyas have explained that because of being touched by Krishna, Krishna's lips, Uttana's body became completely purified of all the poison externally, all the poison internally. And not just that, she became pure and she became endowed with um, fragrance. So when her body was set on fire, it is described... It was the best Agarbati the Brajbasis had ever smelt in their life. Putana Uddhar Katha Ki Jai. Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari Bo. Tomorrow we'll continue with the next verse. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Amrinda Prabhu, for such a wonderful sharing of this verse and explanation. Amazing. As they say, if you really want to do it, you do it. There are no excuses. So that means. We have opportunity to do bhajan, as you as you just narrated very nicely, that everything is available. But if you start making excuses, I cannot wake up, I cannot go to temple because it's far, I don't have something to read, you know, then it's all excuses. In fact, uh, just share one quick thing, you know, uh, one Prabhupada disciple in Iskana Lalan temple, he was giving a brief about his connection with Srila Prabhupada on the Prabhupada disappearance day on Friday. And he mentioned that the kind of opportunity and the information access that we have, even they did not have at that time. Because all the Prova lectures are recorded, they are available now, transcripts are available. They did not have that. But still, just on the one instruction, one meeting with Srila Prabhupada, they were absorbed in so much devotion that we are not able to do it, even having so many things around us. I'm talking myself because you know I, I find it so difficult to get absorbed. But, uh, but that, that's how our condition is. So as they say, if you want to quit something, quit making excuses. So <laughs> <laughs> let us start uh, going towards success of reaching Radha and Krishna Prem. That's our goal. That's our ultimate that Prabhu keeps telling from day one. And, and many lectures he has told, not just this series, many times. He just keeps telling the same thing. But... Since it is not palatable, he gives us in a different way. Okay, you don't like this? Okay, I'll give it this way. <laughs> if you don't like it, take it this way. Like that. So thank you. Thank you very much, dear Amrinda Prabhu. And, and this time, Bhishma Panjag is for four days, you know. It's not even five days. So I think in I think in India, it's still five. We are very fortunate. I think they get five days, but we yeah, here in yeah, America get only four. Four days, yes. Friday to Monday. They call it Panchak, but it's a, you know, <laughs> we, we get only like four days. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, uh, dear devotees, for giving your association. Tomorrow we'll see you on the same Zoom temple, same time. Look forward to hear from you. But tomorrow get ready, as Prabhuji mentioned. We request who has prepared for shlokas, uh, may please raise their hand and recite the shloka. Okay. So we might read like 10, 11 devotees, so 44 shlokas, so 4 for each. So 11 devotees get opportunity. So please do it like that. And then and we'll, we'll have a recitation. So thank you so much. Hare Krishna. We all can unmute and pay our gratitude to his guest. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We can't thank you enough for being here. Hi. 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 H